Welcome back everyone. This is Eric KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts and rather than being out in the Indian River jet skiing on the Memorial Day weekend, I'm here on my desk making videos of radios for you guys to watch. Why? Because I love you guys. You're just the best. I have something here that I want to show you. This is the Zygu G90. This is a 10 through 160 meter 20 watt radio with built-in automatic antenna tuner built on an SDR architecture. So let's recap for a second. Back in the past, I have, I still have it, but I've shown you the X5105 by uh, uh, Zygu. This is the five watt QRP HF and six meter with a built-in tuner and battery. So I've shown you that, I've played with that before. I also had the XPA125 for a demo, showed you a video, that's the matching amplifier to bring it from five to 125 watts. And then in the past, I also had the Zygu X108G. That was a 20 watt. So this radio right here, similar in looks to the X108G, but a completely different radio. So the, the big question is, you know, I've had a lot of comments and people saying, yeah, you know, you're at, you're showing us all these radios that are $2,000, $3,000. I'm a newbie. How do I get into radio without spending that much? And absolutely, you're totally correct because you're not rich. I'm not rich. I just happen to work extra side jobs and pull strings to make money and hide it from the wife to buy these neat toys. Some people can't do that. I get it. So there has to be videos on other gear to show you stuff that you can get in and make great contacts, uh, whether you're portable or at home with radios like this. So I'm going to try to focus more on radios that are more budget friendly, like the XG90. So let's talk about that. And uh, I, did, I did pick this up from Dayton Hamvention. I went to MFJ. MFJ is a dealer of these and the 5105 and the amplifier. And I was talking to them and I saw that and I knew this radio was out, but I didn't really have any interest in it yet. Then I saw it and thought, wow, that'd be good to share it on video. So I picked one of them up and I brought it home. The TSA did not go through the box when it was in my bag, but they did charge me extra because of the weight to bring my bag home on the plane. So let's check out the XG90 by Zygu. So I don't do unboxing videos, but the one thing I just want to see is for the newcomer or someone that's budget friendly, what does this thing come with? That's, you know, unboxing videos is as boring as watching paint dry or watching FT8, but um, I just want to see what it comes with. So we'll show you here and then we'll get right into it afterwards. Here is the radio. Okay. This is the uh, G90. And it, like I said, it's similar in looks to the X108G. Okay, it's got the handles. I think the X108G had these handles were optional, um, but it's got pretty much the same panel on the back, I think, if I remember. That's the same panel, same power adapter, same plugs and accessory ports. The difference with this one is it's got a detachable faceplate. You could actually take this faceplate off and it comes with a remote cable. We'll check that out shortly. It's also got um, your detachable faceplate cable here. The power cord, which um, is actually fused this time. And uh, here's the, the mic cable. So the microphone is the exact same mic as my X5105. And uh, actually, I don't think the 108G had this kind of mic. The 5105 that I have uh, up there in the closet, the mic's the same, okay? And that actually looks like my uh, ID51 mic, doesn't it? And this is a cable I'm guessing for programming and or firmware updates because they're constantly releasing this stuff with uh, bugs and they rely on people on YouTube and Facebook groups to report the bugs and then they can come out with a firmware update and just like that, they fix it. Now, one thing I don't see in this, and this was something I read online, was somebody got this radio with a uh, grid square map that hangs under a wall. I don't see it here, so therefore, I do not have the map. I do have a manual, but I don't have that nice map. But you know what? I got a Yaesu map anyway, so I don't need a Zygu map. Uh, so that's what's in the box. Let's start checking it out. Let's look at the case design first. So uh, reminiscent of the X108G, if you're familiar with that. Not too big. Um, I mean, it is quite heavy for what it is. Uh, not saying it's too, too heavy, but I'm going to say it's about as heavy as my uh, 706, at least. Um, on the back of this transceiver here, you have the DCN power cord, 
You have a accessory port, which is three, four, five, six. It's an eight pin accessory. And then you have your SO239 for antenna, your key for CW, your COM, which is for firmware updates of the actual unit. Apparently there's a COM on the side too, and you could update the, the head unit of the radio as well. Uh, and the IQ. So it's got an IQ out, uh, 3.5 millimeter, and I guess you can interface that with the, um, the what they keep saying, the, the DT1 pan adapter by Z uh, Zygu, but I haven't seen that yet, only pictures of it. That's supposed to be still in production maybe, but having a pan adapter, you could go right into the IQ and uh, get a whole separate screen, or you could do it like I did with the, 10, uh, the uh, X105105. I used a little $20 RTL SDR dongle. So you do have ways of hooking up a pan adapter or computer, you know, for uh, a waterfall and stuff like that there, okay? On the, on, here's on the side, like I said, the headphone jack and a COM port jack for uh, both 3.5 millimeter for updating the firmware it says in the head unit and other features. Maybe that's for future. It appears that because they give you an Allen wrench, where is it? They give you an Allen wrench here, probably to remove these so you can take this head off. Now, I didn't, I thought maybe it'd just clip right off. That's the way it appears, is that I have to take these handles off, maybe a couple more screws to get the head unit off for the remote, you know, remote head operation. Uh, maybe I'll get into that later. On the top, you also have mode up and down for AM, CW, upper side, lower side, as well as band up and down. So we'll fire this thing up. And we'll zoom in on the screen so you can see what you're working with if you were to purchase one of these. Okay, so the screen, first impressions, this is not for the visually impaired. If you have a hard time seeing or you are one of my followers uh, that are visually impaired, this may not be for you. Very small screen. Now, with that said, it's still completely usable. Uh, on the screen, you know, you have a VFOA, a VFOB. On the left here, it shows you your mode and the AGC, the voltage up here. You have on the bottom what appears to be a waterfall, which is probably where the signals will show up as you're tuning across the band. Your S meter here, as well as your SWR over here on the right. Something else, and this feature was actually an upgrade in future releases on the X108 when they kept adding firmwares. It comes standard in this one. It's the SWR analyzer. I wouldn't hold it too much as more than just a reference, but if you hold the power button here, you can see it starts sweeping uh, SWR. They call it SWR scanner. We'll go up to 10 meters like this. We'll go to uh, 28. Dot, let's see. No, oh, 28.4. If I go like this and I go to scan, you can see I'm really, really flat on 10 meters. Uh, that's how I have the antenna tuned is right there in the middle of the phone portion. So that's that's accurate right there. And actually my antenna is good all the way up to AM. It's pretty broadbanded on 10, uh, my vertical. So yeah, that's looking about good right there where I usually have it. So pretty cool. If you don't have an analyzer, it gives you an idea of what your antenna is actually doing uh, as far as SWR and when you make changes, what the uh, outcome of the changes are. If I push the volume knob in, it actually switches from the speaker to the headphone jack on the left. So you can go back and forth or an external speaker if that's what you want to use. Uh, the bottom button, if you push that in, would actually turn the squelch. You could, you know, it sets it to squelch, so then you can use the VFO knob here to adjust the squelch. Okay. Um, right. So that's 2.4 kilohertz wide. So another fun fact, I was just playing with the filter bandwidth settings on the digital filter that they have in here. So you can push the function button, the light turns on, means you're like in a second function. And then you can push the button down here, the compression or noise blinker, and that's going to open two little numbers on the left, low and high. If you see the filter width waveform here, uh, you could actually adjust the low and the high. Like see, I can squeeze it like that to 600, or I can open it up here, push this button, open it up here. That should be three kilohertz wide, 2.9 kilohertz. That's, uh, let's see, 2.9 kilohertz wide. So you could squeeze it up for CW with the noise blinker and noise reduction. You could probably uh, knock out some of the noise 
you know, get it nice and narrow and uh, not as narrow as 250 hertz, but you know, it, it definitely uh, helps when you're trying to look for CW contacts. So it, it, it seems to have some really clear, clear audio on here. Uh, let's make this contact here. Kilo, Juliet 4, Yankee, Zulu, India. Yankee, Zulu, India Station, go. Unreal. Uh, yeah, Kilo, Juliet 4, Yankee, Zulu, India. I'm in Florida. Name is Eric Echo Romeo, India Charlie. Just testing out a new radio and heard you in there. You're a good uh, solid S4, S5. Over. All right, fine business, Larry. And uh, yeah, it's coming up a little bit. You're over S5 now. You sounded a lot better turning that beam. I'm just playing with a, a Zygu G90 and just happened to turn it on and see you were the largest signal in the waterfall. So I figured I'd make the trial over. Oh, well, I appreciate you taking time to give us a call. By the way, you are 5'9 plus 5. 5'9 five, five, plus 5. Plus five. I will do my best to try it. I just appreciate the uh, answer, uh, the uh, response back when I called for you. So thanks, Larry, in Mississippi. Take care. Have a good rest of your Memorial Day weekend. Be safe. And 7-3, KJ4, YZI. Okay, right back to you, Eric. And, uh, uh, Sounds you really good. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend and 7-3. And let's see here. Uh, okay, so now that I made that contact, the, the audio is really clear. It does sound good. Um, I mean, there's, there's not much that I need to say or uh, show about this. To be honest with you, it's um, an affordable rig that you just saw will actually work. Um, and, you know, it's got more features than just a standard traditional. If that screen was any bigger, that would be impressive to have that little, you know, a, a much bigger screen on a, a radio of the price like this. You're talking under $500 for this radio. Um, and, you know, you can find a used ICOM 706 uh, from, you know, the same price, uh, 706 Mark IIG. But if you want something a little bit newer, uh, you know, I, I would think the ICOM quality over a Zygo quality would probably be far uh, more advanced, higher quality. But, I, again, I encourage uh, other, you know, manufacturers to step into the game because... They will learn as we buy and use these radios. They will learn what works, what doesn't work. And think about 10 years from now, maybe they go back and say, remember we tried this little Zygu G90? I mean, it is possible, you know? Look who I, <laughs> this one's for you, Jan. Thank you, thank you. Is Kilo, Kilo Charlie 4, Tango Victor Zulu. Thank you, thank you. This is Kilo Charlie 4, Tango Victor Zulu. Kilo, Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu, India. Here you go. Watch, watch. Very good, Todd. Pleasure to uh, make you in the logbook for 2019. Have a good day and 7-3, KJ4, YZI. Oh my gosh. Great state of Georgie. Wow. <laughs> that one was for you, Jan. I already know what I'm going to see when I pull this off here. So to, t to take the uh, head unit off, you do have to take the four screws out, two brackets with the Allen wrench they give you. And being that they're using a serial cable, that's what I expected to see. So they're using a DB9, a male on the head and a female on the body. So with that cable right here, you could actually plug it in and use it remote head. I, I would have rather seen a uh, little RJ11 or something, but maybe uh, maybe Chang ordered uh, 10,000 DB9s and wanted to get used to get rid of them, you know. 
But um, so the remote head, yeah, you take the four screws out. Uh, actually, you could leave the you could leave these handles off if you wanted to. Um, but the four screws hold the head on, and I guess you can update the head firmware by itself. That's probably where the SDR stuff happens in the head, because for you to uh, upgrade it uh, with a cable, maybe they could change the waterfall display in there, make it larger. Who knows? All right, guys, thanks for watching 7.3. This is KJ4YZI. You can check out the G90 at MFJ on their website. The link is in the description. More videos on the way. The bands are not dead. 7.3, KJ4YZI.